What are you doing? No, no one else can see you fumble fucking with your floor right now, except for me. Yeah. I, well, I had a catastrophe. I dropped my bottle opener. Oh, <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 167 for Thursday, the 29th of March, 2018. We're back on our normal day. We're not a year behind anymore. Uh, this is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests, or lack of guests, celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. That's Kent. You're listening, and we're out. Uh, wait, no, uh, no, we have we have shit to talk about, don't we? Man, yeah, like it's it's a good thing that we're professional podcasters. Is that what we uh, are? We do we do really pro stuff like start the show on time. No, uh, right date. No, uh, stall updates within an hour of going live for the show. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and whose brilliant move was that? Uh, I'm not gonna call the guy out. I mean, he's a really he's a really cool dude, and he's really smart, and um, he's a professional podcaster. So oh. I don't wanna I don't wanna call his name. I, uh, but he's in studio with you, right? Yeah, yeah, he's right. Yeah, he's here with me. Okay. Um, uh, but he, uh, but uh, but he's 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 actually just uh, just just sitting right next to you, or like, are you sharing a shirt? What's going on, man? Okay, I lied. It's me. Um, I suck at managing uh, my computer stuff. Um, I'm not good at things, and uh, I don't know why you people are listening to me right now. <laughs> we don't either. <laughs> but I'm glad that you are, because it's Thursday night. It's the Ritual Misery Podcast, my favorite time of the week. Oh, and, and what a week it has been, man! Uh, just so busy, so crazy. Uh, I will tell you, I had a, a a good thing happen this week. A really good thing. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, I don't know. What, did you install updates? When no, you? no, no. I, I, I decided not to do that. Oh, well, that, well see, that's <laughs> that makes you a good podcaster. <laughs> uh, what was it, man? What was the what was the cool thing? Man, fucking soccer season has started. Yeah. Yeah. High yeah. school soccer is back in in swing. We They had their first game last night. It was amazing. I watched uh, watched one of my daughters almost beat the shit out of another girl who was pushing her too much. That's really cool. Yeah, that's, that's I got, got yelled at by a ref. Uh, they won three to zero, and good times all around. Nobody got hurt, which is really important. All, all good things, except for one thing that that uh, I, I don't think is good for for soccer season. Hmm. Uh, I, I happened to see some photographic evidence of said soccer mm-hmm. game, mm-hmm. and uh, I noticed something like really wrong about those pictures. There's snow. Yes. Surrounding the field. Yes. And uh, that's not cool, man. Th- there was actually snow falling during the, during the soccer match. <laughs> I mean, this is I mean, football. Okay, soccer. <laughs> soccer is a summer sport, dude. There's snow. <laughs> what is happening? Um, they they spent uh, they spent all of their practice time for the last three weeks shoveling two and a half feet of snow off the soccer field. Unacceptable. So they're conditioned. They're just not practiced. <laughs> 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 like they came home every day, their shoulders and their back were hurting and everything else. And like, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. It's called cross training. Right. Yeah. No, it, it's uh, it's pretty serious. And, uh, but they did great, man. The field looks awesome and it, it, they did great. Awesome, man. That's, that's and it, unfortunately it's one of those artificial turfs where you can't like put a snow plow or whatever on it because it'll tear the stuff up. So they had mm-hmm. to shovel it by hand, but, um, they, I mean, they made it happen. And now all the snow is on the track and the track, <laughs> the track starts in like two weeks. So now the track wimps, uh, I mean, uh, track uh, 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 jerks. I mean, uh, the track kids have to go and shovel it off there and over the fence. Uh, yeah, well, uh, snooze you lose, I guess. Uh, well, I the, <laughs> the way the soccer team feels is if, if, the, uh, if the track people had come out and helped them clear the field, which they will be using during their, their track needs, then maybe they wouldn't have dumped all the snow right on the track. I I'm I'm just saying, call it like you see it. That's pretty fair to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, they needed some cross training as well, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they <laughs> certainly do now. Um, also, this Dude, week. Uh, go ahead. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. No. I'm no. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'll go. Then you can interrupt me, and then we'll both go, and then we'll both stop. How's that? Yeah. That's that's how podcasting works over Skype. Right. Yes. Um, this week was a sale on the division on Steam. 75% off? Holy so shit. So I came home one day and uh, my son David he was like, "Hey, I bought uh the division for you and me so we can play on PC 
because he's not much of a he doesn't like doing first person shooters on the PlayStation. He'd rather do it on the computer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> Whereas I have RSI, so I can't be sitting there, you know, doing the the uh, what, what is it, the ASD a- AWSD claw to move my guy around for like hours at a <laughs> right. time, you know. So yeah, yeah. I got my Xbox controller and I'm using that while he's using his mouse and keyboard. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But yeah, we picked that up and been playing the hell out of it. It's really fun. It's I, the, the graphics are better on the PC because I have a better graphic card in my computer than I do in the PlayStation, of course. But sure. it's yeah, just as fun. So that's awesome, dude. Um, yeah, Steam sales. God, like yeah, how awesome is that? Yeah, I also picked up Mo- Motorsport Manager for like six bucks or something like that. Eight bucks. It's basically where you're you're the manager of a motorsport team. Of a uh, like indie car team or whatever Formula One, mm. yeah, Formula One, and you have to make the decisions on who to train and what what research to do, what parts to buy, that kind of stuff. And then when it's mm. on actually race time, you tell them when to pit, how they're going to pit, what, what you know, what fuel to put in, all this stuff. And it's it's really detailed, but not like you're not doing air pressure, but you are doing fuel load. You know, right? So yeah, right. it's really fun. Yeah, no, that's cool, man. Uh, we need to get a, a like an affiliation with Steam. Like use our code and like give us a percentage of the right. You no, know, you no, know, you can do that, especially on Twitch. I just I don't know how. Like I, oh, I haven't figured that part out yet. Yeah, we need to do that. Uh, man, th- speaking <clears throat> of things being on sale, dude, Movie Pass is on sale right now. Right, they are. They they took a hit in the PR department a couple weeks ago with their CEO saying, "Oh, we we know where you shop and we know we're tracking you for this and that," and then having to backpedal on that. And to make up for it, they popped a seven dollar price tag. On a uh, a seven dollar monthly price tag on a year subscription to Movie Pass, um, I'm actually uh, tempted to do this now. It was it was ten bucks before and it was a deal for my family. Oh, we oh, could yeah. we could hit movies all the time. So this is so six ninety five a month is right about so six ninety five is right about half of a movie ticket for me. Mm. That's about so one, see, that's about a movie ticket for me up here. So if I see one movie every other month. <laughs> It already just pays for itself. <laughs> That's like a no-brainer, especially as many movies you see. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you're damn right I jumped on this. Yeah. Uh, the card should be here anytime. <laughs> they say about two weeks. So whatever the fuck that means. Um, I, I did it like uh, Sunday, I think. My problem with this is I would have to get either five or eight of them. Either five for me, the wife, and the three middles, you know, the twins and well, David. Or just well, go balls out and get eight for all of us. So here's so here's the thing. Because before I committed to this, because it's one of those things that seems too good to be true. So I had to read the terms of service and the all the FAQ and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So the thing about this is that you need to keep in mind is that if you want to order two of them, mm-hmm. you need two devices. So when you when you purchase the ticket, like when you when you actually go to the movie theater to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. Your ticket has to be on your account, on your device, with your card. Mm. And then, like, Ricky's ticket would have to be her account, her device, her card. You right. can't double up on, on uh, any devices. So we would just have to get six and have my sister-in-law in everybody oh, else. And, oh, and also, to have an account, you have to be 18 or over. Oh. Yeah, so that's another thing. Because I was, I was this close to buying four. Right. And yeah, that's that's not happening. Huh. <sighs> so, yeah, just some things to keep in mind. That that does sadden me. Yeah, but it's still like I'm I got one for myself to try it out mm-hmm. and then if it's if it's as awesome as it's uh all, you know, cracked up to be, then I'm going to encourage Lucas and Steph to do the same because yeah. it's going to save us money. We um, see more than movies a year. I mean, come on. Yeah. Hot, hot beverages in the, in the chat room is asking if she should get it, but she never watches movies. But that's one of the things that you don't watch movies because there's an expense involved. You know, like if you were to go watch all the movies, you'd be paying out the butt. But if you can watch, if you have time to see one um, each weekend, then that's four between oh. four and five a month and you're easily making your money's worth and it gives you something to do. Yeah, absolutely. So, it, it, you have to pay a year at a time. So, it was like 85 80 bucks. Yeah. 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 So, so there's that. Um, Definitely pretty awesome. Cool. And we'll, we'll have a link to that in our, in our show notes. And if you don't, if you don't know what movie pass is, um, all I can really say is go watch some cord killers, go look back through some cord killers because they have discussed it extensively over the yeah. last year. 
Yeah, exactly. So speaking of movies, I, I did see a movie this past weekend. Yeah. Uh, I have hyped it last week. Pacific yeah. Rim Uprising. Okay. Um, yeah, man. Uh, yep. Yep. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, another one of your fantastic movie reviews. <laughs> man, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my my review of the first movie is that yeah, there's a plot and there's some characters, but who gives a fuck? Because none of it matters. It's mm. about the giant robots and the giant monsters fighting each other, which I still hold by that. Uh, it's it's essentially a kaiju movie. Yeah, exactly. And so this movie uh, should have been the same, right? <laughs> like, um, yeah, there's some some plot and some some characters but who cares because just watch the monsters and the robots fight right <sighs> unfortunately did did they did they story. did they fall in trip and and spill some plot into your kaiju movie man they spilled a shitload of plot <laughs> like they, they spilled about eight plots that oh. none of them like none of them fully played out or made any goddamn sense <laughs> especially mixed together <laughs> Uh, and then, which all of that could be forgiven if the monster fights were great. Mm. They were not. Mm. They were choreographed poorly. They looked like shit. The camera angles, well, quote camera angles Mm -hmm. because CG uh, were garbage. Like they should have had Guillermo del Toro back for this one. And if he couldn't do it, well, then no go on the movie. Like that's what they should have done. This Mm. dude. Stephen DeKnight, I think, was the director. This is the first movie he's ever fucking directed, ever. Uh, he's done some TV. So like he's he, actually so, so he fairly go, he, TV back. He should go back to high school movies then, right? Something. He, he <laughs> Just go back to television. Um, yeah, I don't know if he's going to direct in Hollywood again. <laughs> Damn. Uh, this was, I, I can't. Man, I'm so mad because I looked so forward to this and I hyped the fuck out of this movie yeah. to people around me. And... I like I came to work on Monday and was just like uh, the because normally I'd come to work on Monday morning and be like oh dude the movie was great uh, but like uh, so I walked into to one of my friend's offices and he was like so how was the movie I just walked out of the room <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it <laughs> I was so mad uh, but so to keep that tradition up of being hyped and probably disappointed with a movie Ready Player One is this weekend hmm. <laughs> wait. I've already heard early early reviews that it's 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 decent, but doesn't live up to expectations. Yeah, well, I mean, here's the thing, and and uh, Steph and I were talking about this. Steph has read the book probably like eight times now. Mm. Like it's her favorite book. She loves it. Um, I love it. I've only actually read it once, uh, but it's that's that's typical of me. I'll read a book once and then like try to commit it to memory, right. and then you know I'll relive it in my mind or whatever. Have good discussions about it, um, but. Uh, yeah, she's really apprehensive about this movie because she doesn't think it's going to live up to the book. And I just i i try to i try to temper her ex- expectations by by telling her that the movie is not going to be the book. It is going to be subpar to the book. Like it will be. Right. Uh, this is something else that's like the book, and you know, cheer for the moments that remind you the most of the book. So I'm hoping that works for me because when I said it out loud to her, I was also talking to myself. <laughs> um, so we'll see, and and we'll also see if I get my my movie pass card in the next couple of days. And I was, uh, was going to say about Pacific Rim, like you took the chance to see it before you get your movie pass going, and <laughs> it's like double the disappointment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, man. Um, so oh, you. Know what? One thing that I saw this week that I, okay, so I've been trying to get you to listen to Hamilton forever. Yes. Forever, ever. I finally. What's your name, son? <laughs> I told you it's a two hour and 23 minute earworm, dude. Like every track on there is catchy. Oh, man. Um, yes. And, and I, I, I will, I would say um, a good 80% of it is hip hop based. Cause there are several songs towards the middle, especially like the, the Skylar sisters and things like that. They kind of get into more of a, almost more of an R R and B feel. Um, a little, little, little more, uh, Alicia keys and a little less usher, but, um, the whole thing is great. And I got to tell you, I've listened to this album. 
I don't know, 40 or 50 times all the way through. Plus, like when I hear when I hear a certain song, I just skip to the song. So the entirety as a whole, I've listened to it probably 40 or 50 times. Like it's just been on repeat for a while. Um, yeah. And then I found a vid cam version, a handy cam version of the of the original cast doing the, the actual musical. And it brought just watching the visuals along with the music because the, the music on the on the handy cam version was actually pretty blown out. But I, I already knew the song, so I knew what to expect, what they're supposed to sound like, right? Well, watching the visuals of it, it added like this whole... I, I have not had that experience where I listen to something, like listen to a movie several times where you know all the lines and then watch the movie. It was... It's a whole completely new level for this for, for that musical, dude. It's amazing. And it, it, I'm, I'm like excited to go watch a musical now, it's, which so- is crazy to me. That's great. And I so I just saw something in the chat that uh, relates to what you just said, actually. So uh, God King said Pacific Rim. I think that's on Pornhub as well, (laughs) which alone is a funny joke, but also somehow relates to what you just told me. Because the only place you can find it online is to go to Pornhub and look up Patriots or lo- and and you ha- you still have to filter through. <laughs> but you look up like anything having to do with the Declaration of Independence, that kind of stuff and you'll find a link to watch this video. They keep taking it down and they keep putting it back up with different names on it. Uh yeah, just just go to Pornhub and look up Patriot. That was the keyword that got me there. Uh <laughs> David, I'm I'm curious to do this now because I want to see what else pops up on. Uh, it's it's actually a lot of gay porn. Like <laughs> it, it was pretty much like the the one video you wanted to see, surrounded by nothing but gale, uh, gay gay gale form. Um, gale? gay <laughs> gay ma- male porn. It was just surrounded by it. So I mean, for, I mean, oh. I I kind of I kind of see the connection, uh, but <laughs> you, you just got to be careful what you're clicking on when you get the search oh. results. Patriotic gay porn. Look yeah. that at. <laughs> it's probably one of the one of the working titles for their uh, for the oh, reposting. Oh um, but, but yeah, yeah you, you want to? I'm, I'm interested now that you've had a little bit more time to listen to it. Well, first of all, how much of it have you listened to? Um, uh, about a song. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, because when you so when you when you were talking to me about it last week and you're like come on dude just like listen to listen to one song Mm -hmm. i was like all right cool so i went to youtube and i found one and yeah man i was like this is fucking awesome and then i started talking to you and by that time i was drunk and went to bed and then i forgot all about it (laughs) until i just mentioned it (laughs) so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna find the whole album and i'm gonna i'm gonna take that out uh what i did here was was pretty damn good i liked it yeah it's it's really really awesome and the fact that it tells a story that's like 90 percent true to, to to fact is just even more amazing well another thing that is 90 percent true is that patreon.com <laughs> slash ritual misery is a great place to support podcasters now you're just lying to people man it's a 100 <laughs> percent good place to go to support professional never late never updating at the last second and always perfect audio all the time podcasters at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah, man. If, if you get in there right now and pledge, you can hear the epic, epic hour and a half plus post show from the Tay Allen episode from just a couple of months ago. And let me tell you that alone is worth the price of admission to pay, <laughs> I pay a dollar to listen to that. That is probably our best post show uh, definitely one of our best, if not the best post show we have ever had. Wow. It is fantastic. Uh, so good. Um, also, if you go in there and you pledge, I believe at the $5 level, you starting in April, you will have your name in the credits of each video. That is pretty special. Yeah. I might have to up my pledge just so I can see my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not good enough that your face is on the cover art. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, check it out, guys. Oh, that, that's that's a whole new level. If you pledge at the fifty dollar a week level, we will put your face on the cover art of our show. <laughs> and yeah, improve our cover art with your face. <laughs> dollar pledge. Head over to ritualmisery.com slash support or patreon.com slash ritualmisery. Both of those will work. Hey, and speaking yeah. real quick, I know that I put this in for later on. 
I want to mention how much ass Sergeant Muffin kicks. I didn't say kiss. Ah. I said kicks. Because okay. yeah. we had some problems on our website. He went in there, did his little magic finagling oh. shit. I don't even know what he did. But all of a sudden, the site is like twice as fast. I, I'm not getting errors. It's just beautiful. I'm not even sure how I screwed it up. But somehow I did. And he he streamlined the whole thing. And it is beautiful now on the back end, uh, which most things should be. And uh, it's 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 just fast. It's it's grow, going great. And there's no errors. Like shit's just popping up where it's supposed to. It's amazing. So... Many kudos to the one, the only Sergeant Muffin. Yeah, definitely. All hail Muffin. Yeah, all hail Muffin. That's He's great. the best. We need a salute for that. Um, Man, <laughs> Man um, you remember in high school when uh, it wasn't real easy to get a hold of porn? Right. And you would, you would uh, you know, find like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, the Kmart ad or maybe a Sears catalog or something. And right. And the lingerie that, pictures. That, and, that redhead in the uh, in the green uh, the green one piece in the Sears catalog had me going for probably dude, a good eight oh. or ten months. And if if you could get your hands on a like a Fredericks of Hollywood catalog or whatever, that's fucking pay dirt. Oh, though it was over. Like people didn't see you for a few days. Yeah. So, but one of the uh, one of the things that I would try to get my hands on back then was a was a Cosmopolitan magazine. Oh, good yeah? old Cos. Right, because it had all the like little sex stories and innuendo and. Things like that, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, there's so, oh my god, there's and, so and much makeup tips, which we can tell by wa- looking at you now that you've really taken a kin to. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, all those things. Uh, but yeah, so Cosmo is in the news this week, and um, I'm I'm gonna get to that here in a second. But before we do that, I have a little quiz for you. Oh, I want to know if you can tell the difference between a Cosmo article and a Playboy article. Ooh. So I came up with a quiz that I call, Whose Article Is This? So I'm going to read you a magazine article title. Uh, God can just mention the National Geographic Centerfold. Um, Uh, Not a... Not not a, a map. Uh, well, it, it, or a landscape. National Geographic was like the only porn you could find at the library, though. Mm. Valid, valid. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to read you an article title, a magazine article title, and you're going to tell me if it is from the current issue of Playboy mm. or the current issue of Cosmopolitan. Oh. You ready to play? I am ready. How many questions are there? We have 10. 10 questions, okay. So my guess... I'm gonna I'm gonna place a side bet here that mm. you're you're gonna get fifty percent of them correct. Fifty percent. So chat, chat room uh, is it is it over or under fifty percent? Uh, we'll wait a, we'll wait a few seconds here. We have got some people in the chat room. Am I gonna get over or under the fifty percent on the uh, on the thing here, on the quiz? <clears throat> so yeah. Now so, now these are you said these are current episodes right like uh, issues right current, current issues right yes. on, on on the shelf right now. As far as I know, did, did you did the you internet- buy them on the shelf before the show? Uh, no, but oh. as far as the internet uh, provides information to me accurately, <laughs> uh, they are currently on the shelves. All right, so Amos, we we haven't gotten any over unders in the chat room yet, so well they're lost. Uh, uh. <laughs> Oh, Amos, God, God King says under. Big Voice J says seventy nine, which we'll just round up to eighty because uh, because we're going by tens here. So um, okay, so we got I got one under and one over, and um, Deuce Gone Wild says under. So two unders. Not a lot of faith in the chat room of my my ability to get over fifty percent of these yeah, questions. They they might be right. They might be right. <laughs> I, I tested this out actually earlier today on yeah. someone, and they got forty percent. So oh oh oh. All right. Okay. Amos, whose article is this? Right. Sizzling foreplay techniques. Ooh. Ooh, sizzling foreplay techniques. Can, can I get a clue? Are there clues? Um, so the clue is that it is either from the current issue of <laughs> Cosmopolitan or the current issue of Playboy. G- give, give, me, give me a sentence from it. Give me, give me one sentence from the article. Um, read the article entitled Sizzling Foreplay Techniques. Oh, that's 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 a tough one. That's uh man, that um 
Hmm. Sizzling foreplay techniques. That really does sound uh, something that, that it sounds over the top, over the top. So I'm going to go with Cosmo. Yeah. That is correct. All right. All right. All right. So you're 100 percent so far. All right. We can okay. stop here. We can just stop here. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You might want to because uh, this one I thought that was a pretty easy one. That was a pretty easy okay, one. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, all, right. all right. So next we got. Could you be guilty of micro cheating? Micro cheating. Micro cheating is definitely. Um, oh, hmm. That's that's that's. Ooh. So micro cheating is the you know doing things that you know you're not actually having sex with someone who's not your right, partner, but you, right. it's like you know sexting perhaps or uh, you know having uh, establishing an emotional connection with someone who's not your, right. your partner. Right. Could you uh, be guilty of micro cheating? Whose article is this? That sounds like it's definitely something on the front cover. That's going to be a, a Cosmo thing as well. Yeah. Also yeah. correct. Yeah. All so right. We, we, we can just read, we can just Cosmo. stay here. We can just stay here at 100%. I'm good. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Whose whose article is this? How the future of sex lies in artificial intelligence. Oh, that's totally Playboy. Oh, that's totally Playboy. <laughs> Yeah, there's right. they, got some technology in there. That's got to be Cosmo. Don't give a shit about technology. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Strong accusation there. All right. So, <laughs> number four, whose article is this? How happy couples make it work long term. Oh, I'm going to go with uh, with Cosmo on that because Playboy isn't typically worried about couples. Okay. All, all right. right. All right. I'm going to shoot right, myself doing, in the foot. I'm four for four right now. Quite well so far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all right. Moving on to the next one. Whose article is this? Why do we care so much about our president's sex lives? That sounds like something that's, that, that, that sounds like a good editorial, actually. That's something I wouldn't mind reading. That's got to be Playboy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know your softcore porn magazines. <laughs> So I'm at line right now. I'm I'm at the bar. I'm at the bar. Five for five. So I'm at, at I'm at the bar. Everyone that said under has, has already failed. Um. Yep. So let's just okay. see if I can get that over. Let's see if I can get. I just need one more to 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 better than the chat room, right? All right. All right. So so or, well, six. Well, better better than the chat room's expectation. I'm, I have to beat their expectation. I'm not saying I'm beating chat room because we didn't invite them to the contest. So. <laughs> well, I I I don't think we have to go far to beat their expectation of our show. That's touche. <laughs> All right, Amos. <laughs> whose article is this? Orgasmic gastronomy awaits in Arosa, Switzerland. Orgasmic huh? gastronomy. Orgasmic gastronomy awaits, awaits in Arosa, Switzerland. So apparently, this is like a uh, you know uh, really good food. I guess like enough to give you an orgasm. I don't know. I'm gonna go with Cosmo Gasmic because it involves travel. Oh, wrong. finally, you get one wrong. <laughs> uh, no, that's actually that's a Playboy article. Wow. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they talk about food these days. Uh, you know, I should have guessed because those, those words are a little too big for Cosmo. <laughs> Jeez. Scathing, scathing. All right. Number seven. Whose article is this? The resurgence of once rare STIs. The resurgence of once rare STIs. Hmm. So STI, of course, is the sexually uh, transmitted school, infection. Yeah, the new school term for STD, which was the new school term for VD. Right. Um, which is the uh, which was the new school term for some shit. Uh, Sally bitch, gave me. Bitch, your ass is nasty. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna go. Ooh, let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that on to the Playboy side. No, that is a Cosmo article. Oh my god. Um. So now I'm five for seven. So, so yeah. So Cosmo, you know, uh, you know, informing the young women about uh, sexual health. Right. Right. Uh, no. One of the things they're known for. Oh, okay. Um, okay. okay. All right, so let's move on to number eight. Whose article is this? Stormy Daniels knows what she's doing. Stormy Daniels, of course, being the porn star that's currently in the news for accusing Donald Trump of uh, having sex with her and then paying her to shut the fuck up about it. Playboy. 
It is indeed Playboy, Co- sir. Cosmo don't want nothing to do with no porn. <laughs> so, well, ironically. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So you have beat the spread so uh, far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you are above 50% at this point. We still have two left. Oh, geez. Uh, all right. So let's see. Let's see how high you can get. Let's see how, uh, how, how bad I can screw this said, one up. Said my drug dealer. In right. <laughs> uh, Every time. <laughs> Number nine. Whose mm. article is this? Cardi B gives her most explicit interview yet. Uh, Cardi B, of course, being um, someone I've never fucking heard of before. A <laughs> uh, 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 musical artist. Um, that's that's all I know. Uh, that that's the extent of my Cardi B knowledge. I'm gonna go. Mm, Cardi B gives her most explo- ex- ex- uh, uh, explicit interview yet. Whose article is this? I'm going to go Cosmo. It is indeed Cosmo, sir. Hmm. And for your final question... Because because Playboy would have said ever. (laughs) Yeah, probably. So. All right. Amos, whose article is this? Okay. Is this the hardest one? Is this why you saved it for last? Uh, Is this this in both... (laughs) <laughs> we'll find out. Is, is this in? Is this is a maximum one, right? It's like a total, total brain fuck. Like you're just gonna give me one that's not in either one. <laughs> uh, damn it! Um, uh, note to self: go back in time. <laughs> uh, when do we? Uh, right, so. What do we want? Time machine. When do we want it? Doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. How the Bachelor franchise celebrates polyamory. Whose article is this? Mm. Now, let's do a rundown real quick. The first nine, we had, what, like four Cosmo and five Playboy, right? Um, uh, one, Something like that. I don't know. We had uh, nine of them, and some of them were Playboy, and some of them were Cosmo. I should have wrote this shit down. Note, note <laughs> self, go back in time and write shit down. Um, damn it. Uh, read it how again, the, read it again, read it again. How the Bachelor franchise celebrates polyamory. This, of course, being a reality show about a dude and uh, a whole bunch of chicks that are trying to become his girlfriend. How the Bachelor franchise celebrates polyamory. I'm going to go Playboy. Polyamory seems like a very Playboy kind of word. Right. Yes. And you are correct. You did way better than I expected, sir. You got 8 out of 10 for a very crazy Big score of eighty percent. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, just so we're clear, what was uh, what was a Big Voice Jay's claim on that one? Was it seventy nine that we rounded up to eighty? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I, yeah. So um, it's pretty ridiculous. Like he he might know the show better than we do. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that is likely. Um, but yeah. So uh, so big win to Amos on that one. Boom. Uh, yeah. 80%. So good job, sir. All right. All right. I'm, I'm proud of myself. I, I'm, I'm actually halfway uh, halfway happy. So, so did you hear about this, though? So Cosmo is in the news, like I said before uh-huh. the quiz. Uh, they are in the news. Um, for, for those because a bunch are, of people want to throw some censorship out there and destroy women's rights to have some nasty shit on the checkout line. Yeah. So there's a, there's a couple different takes on this. Um, so for those that are unfamiliar with this story... Uh, Cosmopolitan is very well known as a magazine that ends up in supermarket checkout aisles. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, the thing that makes it controversial is, well, first of all, the cover always features uh, headlines that are uh, sexual in nature. Like Usually there's like eight headlines and six of them are directly related to sex. Mm. Usually one or two of them are uh, like pretty uh, like steamy titles like how to have a great orgasm while you're giving head. You know, like, whoa, right there on the cover. Um, so so that's fact number one. Number two, it, couple that with the fact that it's at about an eight-year-old's eye level right next to the candy. Mm. Um, and that's something that's always kind of bothered me because, uh, you know, we – so uh, I compared the, uh, uh, the, the, the article titles in, in the quiz with Playboy magazine – uh, where you know it's it's always the butt of a joke, but but in my experience, Playboy always actually does have really good articles that have mm-hmm. like highly skilled reporting, uh, interesting subject matters, great uh, interviews. Stuff. 
yeah, wonderful interviews. The, um, I mean, yes, there are uh, pornographic photographs hmm. in the magazine. That's absolutely true. Well, and then once in a while, you'll there, have there a, are now because they took it out for a while. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. that lasted what a year or yeah. something. Yeah, uh, maybe two years. I don't know. Uh, but historically, like when you know, the last time I actually saw a Playboy magazine, it had um, pornographic images. Uh, but <laughs> God King but says the, how to masturbate waiting in line to check out. Yeah, yeah. You know, but so my thing is like, you know, we we have to have Playboy magazines wrapped in plastic on the top shelf of a magazine aisle, uh, you know, the, the behind like the, you know, the cardboard uh, mm. or whatever that is, the, uh, you know, so that you can't see anything except for the title of the magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, but Playboy, I think, it, you know, for the most part is pretty standard, your standard fare that's not like overly graphic. Um in Europe, in fact, when I lived in Europe, you could go to the grocery store and magazines are just like right out in the open in the middle of the grocery store are more graphic than what you would see in a Playboy, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Cosmopolitan was never held to that same standard. It was always right there. Now, not that there is pornographic images in Cosmo, but um, you could argue There's plenty that- of innuendo on the cover if you can read. Sure. And then like when you flip through the magazine uh, and men's health, I've noticed is actually kind of the same way where if, if you flip through the magazine, there are some highly suggestive uh, photographs. Right. It gets a little racy on the inside. Yeah. 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 And with the very in your face uh, on the cover uh, article titles of Cosmo, it's always been a weird thing to me to, to see it like right next to the candy in the checkout aisles. Mm. Uh, well, it, so the reason this is in the news, though. Walmart announced that they are removing Cosmo from the checkout aisles. Uh, they say as a result of a business decision, uh, but I really think what's going on here is uh, conservative group pressure mm. finally got, uh, I say conservative groups, the uh, uh, groups that are uh, concerned themselves with moral censorship, uh, like right. very much like anti-porn, anti-anything-fun like anything fun kind of groups. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just, I'm curious about your hot take on this. Is this a, um, was this a good call? Uh, was this, is this infringing on anyone? Is this, um, um, well, oh, and before you answer, I do want to point out that the magazine was not removed from Walmart's. It's still on magazine aisle or, you know, magazine shelves. It's just not in the checkout line anymore. Um, <clears throat> So I, I, I'm I'm a stout stout believer in the First Amendment and the protections that it provides and, and the ability to say what you want in whatever manner you want and using whatever medium you want. Mm. And I I expect that to be transferred over to stores and in, in, in how they want to present their image and what they want to do with their stores. So as far as where Walmart puts Cosmo or Playboy or anything like that. I'm all for that store putting it wherever they want. They want to put Playboy in the in the unwrapped in the kids aisle, the kids toys aisle. I'm fine with it. <laughs> I'm not going to take my kids to shop there, you know. But I'm fine right. with them doing that. And that's that's the kind of pressures that I want stores to to deal with is the consumer pressure mm-hmm. when it comes to organized groups trying to pressure people into things, trying to pressure businesses into things. That's when it starts getting a little muddy to me because. I am very anti-lobbying. And anytime you get a large group of people to attack a specific company or whatever for how they conduct their business, it, it starts getting a little edgy with me because I really think the businesses should be, should be tailored by the power of the dollar, not the power of the voice. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll disagree with you to a point on this. Uh, I'm all about the power of the voice the power of large groups of people. In fact, I think, um, I think you probably are too. I think you might've like misarticulated because just like a week or two ago, you were praising, um, like mass protests and things like that. No, Uh, no, no, no. That's not against the company. That's against policy. Sure. Right. 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 You know, I can see, well, okay. All right. I guess. All right. Middle road, I guess. Um, (laughs) No, to me, to me, it's not even a middle road. It's it's one 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 thing is okay if you want to gather a large group of people to publicly publicly pro, publicly protest a law or 
try to get a law instituted or a law thrown out, something like that. That makes sense to me because how do how are laws put into place? They're put into place by people that are voted into office. That's it's the same channel. If you right. want to get a large group of people to boycott a store, then just don't spend your money there. Well, yeah, and that's well, you know, and that's kind of the same thing. You you know, the power of the voice, power of the dollar, getting people to boycott a product or a uh, 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 you know an outlet, whatever it is, uh, is kind of the same thing. It, it speaks the same language. Um, you know, changing changing policy, whether it's a corporate policy or government policy or anything. I mean, the result is the you know pretty much the same. Mm. I think um, so. Walmart made this decision not because people were not shopping there. Um, I think they they made this decision based on um, like public image. They didn't want to uh, soil their image any more than what it already. And, and see, and if that's the case, then I'm perfectly fine with the decision because it's Walmart's decision and how they want to present their company. Sure. Right. Yeah. And I think that's at the end of the day, I think that's what this was about. Uh, Big Voice Jay points out in the chat that it was pressure from within. Um, uh, Hearst herself actually. Um, uh, uh, we'll see. In, this effort, I guess. So and then I'm all about so, that. That's good stuff. That's how businesses are supposed to be run. Yeah, yeah, and so she. Um, what what she, I'm not for 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 the for clarification, if the NRA wants to say, well, don't fly Delta because they don't support us. That's that that kind of shit is just really stupid. That that I don't agree with. Like, don't don't try to use your your weight as an organization to to counteract another business for whatever reason. But if if a if you don't go to Delta because you don't like their service, then that's fine. Right, and I know, yes, I know, I'm not, I know, I'm treading some really thin wires here, but that's <laughs> maybe that's just the gray area of the whole thing. But that's how I feel about it. Yeah, and that's and that's one of those things. Like, I, it, it, to me, it, it's really hard to distinguish. It's hard for me to distinguish the lines between uh, those things because we're we're all kind of the the victims of the narrative, right? Right. And if it's a if it's a policy that we very much agree with, we're more likely to agree with the methods used, uh, and then vice versa, right? Um, so it's I don't know it's else. an interesting thing, but I'm, I'm curious about your uh, your opinion on the action itself, regardless of the reason or how it came about. Removing Cosmo from the checkout aisle, do you think that's a good thing, a bad thing, or it doesn't fucking matter? I honestly don't think it really matters. Um, it, it might hurt Cosmo's bottom line a little bit because they won't, they won't be that impulse to buy. But then I'm one of those people that's, uh, oh man, when, when I, when I hit an impulse to buy something at a checkout lane, it's never a magazine anyway. It's gum or the fucking peanut butter snicker bar or something like that. Like it's, you know, it's like, Oh shit, I forgot. I love those. Let me grab one real quick. Um, they always put the shittiest magazines in the in the checkout. <laughs> yeah, because they, they're trying to sell them. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's like uh, you know, scandal. Uh, two first names of people that I've never heard of are like you know fighting um, or something. Well, you it's know, because who's... we're not the target mar- market for any of that. Yeah. Like I don't know who those people are, and even if I did, why would I give a shit that they right, had an argument? Yeah. Really um, care <laughs> at, not even a little bit. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah no. again, again, I'm I'm all for businesses conducting their business any way they want. I there are a few businesses that I don't uh, uh, patronize because I don't I don't like either their business practices or their I, I I perceive the company to have a lower standard of customer care. You know, mm-hmm. there 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 are co- there are co- companies out there. That, I, my old roommate Brian uh, won't shop at Walmart because he's uh, uh, he feels Walmart is overly anti competitive. So he won't shop at Walmart at all. He'll shop anywhere but Walmart. I'm what all about, for that. That's good. Will he use Amazon? Um, I don't. Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that'd be that'd be. They, they never they, they never came up in conversation because when we when when we were rooming together, I I don't think either one of us were really in a financial place to be buying a bunch of. I mean, we we're two <laughs> two grown ass adults rooming together. We didn't have the yeah, finances too, to too poor for Prime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, we were uh, we were sitting there drinking uh, 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 the cheapest beer we could find on the Netflix we'd already paid for. Uh, you know, that's that's that yeah. was that's that was our entertainment. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all for for that that kind of stuff too. If, if, however, however, Walmart wants to conduct their business within the bounds of the law, and I mean, now if there's a law saying well you can't 
you can't have racy magazines or something like that on checkout lanes, then I'd be like, oh, that's, that's, I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, I, there's, well, I, I'm okay because so like us putting the porn in plastic or, you know, on the top shelf or whatever the thing is, you know, like I'm, I'm okay with that because mm -hmm. if every grocery store put pornography in the checkout lane and you just didn't go to them because they do this thing that you don't like, where the fuck are you going to get your groceries? You know what I mean? Right. It's, so I'm okay with there being, uh, you know, commerce rules or even laws that have, you know, some degree of like child protection for right. the masses. Right. Uh, and you know, people can agree or disagree that, 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 that's uh, a child protection issue. Um, and that's fine. Uh, but I, like I, for one, I'm kind of glad that it's not in the checkout lane anymore. Uh, just because of the, you know, like it's very, Ah, oh, man, it's just to me, I don't think it's appropriate for children to be reading about um, having orgasms while giving a blowjob, mm. uh, you know, while while mom's trying to wrangle the candy bar out of their hand or, or you know, whatever the case. <laughs> right. Um, now, about Cosmopolitan magazine as an entity, I think it's I think it's great. I think it's a um, well, I told you what I did with it in high school. Uh, but uh, <laughs> But no, I, like, it's a vector for many causes. <laughs> yeah. Like for, for young women for, you know, um, like later teen, uh, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old girls, mm. uh, even to like young adult women, I think there's some very sex positive articles in there. Um, and they don't just talk about sex. There's, you know, uh, it's, it's fashion makers, it's, it's political, yeah, it's right? Yeah. And it's um, not just women, by the way. Yeah. You know. I've, I've read many, a, many a Cosmo article, uh, sitting on the shitter sure. at my aunt Paula's house. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, but I mean, obviously the target audience is young women. Well, and I, think I mean, so to extrapolate this, what you're saying is exactly the same way that I feel about, say, gun control. I don't want to stop people from buying guns, but I fully, fully believe that we should have at least as much restriction on guns, such as the age limit and licensing and things like that and registration as we do on driving a goddamn vehicle. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. see that there's, I don't want you to stop, stop you from buying a gun if you're legal, uh, legal to own one. But why, why do not, why, why don't we have them registered? Why don't we have a count of them? Why, you know, yeah, the government can say, well, we need to take that guy out. He's got too many guns. Well, then don't buy so many fucking guns, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and so with, with Cosmo magazine, like they could have wrapped it in plastic and kept it in the checkout aisle and I would have been cool with it. Right. Um, so I don't know. I'm a, this article struck me because it's something that I've been thinking about for like 20 years. Right. And now that it's happened, I don't know exactly how I feel about it because of, you know, implications about the, this and that. And the, yeah. I didn't think it would be as controversial as it has turned out to be. Even on uh, the show. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so there's that. So speaking of controversial issues, um, <laughs> Facebook, man. Um, uh, yeah. The Facebook people got that Facebook. Yeah. Uh, oh, big voice. Jay, it just, just suggested a title. I smell sex and candy. <laughs> oh, and, and such a good song too. I, that that earns an extra vote just because it's such a good song. Right, right. Um, yeah, stay tuned for the after show uh, right here on twitch.tv slash ritual misery is where we choose our titles. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, man. So, so you did a Facebook ex experiment. I did, dude. All right. So for, for those that don't know, uh, Facebook is a social media <laughs> platform. Right. Um. Yeah, uh, it, it's kind of controversial. It's been controversial to an extent for about as long as it's existed. Uh, but it's it's incredibly controversial now uh, because of the way that it abuses and misuses and um, pretty much every other negative. Or just didn't give a shit about your data. Your data. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> your, your personal data, your user data. Yep. Um, so what, what, what was this experiment that you did? So uh, it's been quite a while. Uh, I would say uh, a few years at least that I've been just like hovering over that delete button mm. uh, to get rid of Facebook. And now that it's like it's kind of a movement that, you know, hashtag delete Facebook movement, it kind of came back into my mind. Uh, like, should I get rid of it? Because the only time I go to Facebook is when I get a notification, like somebody tagged me in a photo or somebody uh, you know, uh, wanted me to see uh, a meme or a video or something right. like that. It's really the only time I go there. Facebook is uh, my three o'clock friend. Like it's three o'clock in the morning and I ain't got shit else to do, but I'm wide awake. I'll hop on Facebook and just watch crazy videos for an hour. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I'm not anti-social media. I, 
I love Twitter. Like I'll, I'll get on Twitter and I'll be on there for an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not anti social media. It's just Facebook's, um, yeah, I don't need to go into that. Everybody, everybody understands that Facebook. So, So describe the experiment real quick. All right. So, uh, knowing that I have generally have a negative, uh, experience when I get on Facebook, I wanted, I wanted some way to talk about it, some way that I could quantify my negative experience and right. discuss it. So I decided to create a spreadsheet and I would have two columns, positive and negative, And I would scroll through my Facebook feed and categorize things as either positive or negative as I see them. I was like, well, let me go a step further. Let me, let me come up with some subcategories, right. That further define that. And, uh, I just, I wanted to keep it simple so I didn't get too in the weeds, but I created Six subcategories, three of which were positive and three were negative. So, so on Under the positive pos- side, you have friend and family life update. Uh, right, which encourage- is, yeah, huh? I was just going to define them as you go. Okay. So, so those are ba- your your classic social media posts, like, "Hey, check out the pics of the baby." Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Encouraging message. Yeah. So just a, you know, just a generally positive thing, like uh, like, "Hey, everybody, uh, you're you're a great person." You know what? <laughs> Something. Mm-hmm. Something that's just generically positive. Um, and entertaining, which right. I, I, I found to be uh, it's pretty ambiguous. Well, yeah, right. So for my criteria as I went through this, it was things that were posted purely for entertainment, like a video or a meme or a funny joke. Hmm. It's not It's not a factual update about what's happening in your life. It's a, so three guys walk into a bar, right? You know, it's it's that sort of thing. It's not like today I was at a bar and I saw three people. Right. That would be a friend update. Three, three guys walking to a bar. The fourth dude's like, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so two guys walking to a bar, a third guy ducks. Yep. Uh, um, and then follow- on the uh, on the negative side, you have advertisement, which is self-explanatory. Yeah. Uh, a hateful message. Yeah, which is just, you know, the opposite of the encouraging message, just mm-hmm. uh, anything that's just generally hateful. And the other one that I found to be ambiguous uh, in its own way, politics. Yeah. and this you, was, lumped, you lumped all polit- political stuff together into one negative category, regardless of if exactly. you're pro or against. Exactly, because I didn't want to be biased toward it. And like, you know, say encouraging message is that uh, Barack Obama was the greatest president of all time, and here's why. Hmm. I don't want to put positive or encouraging. That's that's politics, right? Right. Uh, whether I agree or disagree with that, it's, it's still, still politics. politics and yeah. It's going to be negative. I don't want that shit. Like I read the news religious. Like I'm a I'm a newsaholic. <laughs> I read a shit load of news. I get my politics from reading news articles. I don't need that shit in my social media feed. Like right. that's a negative experience for me. Okay, so let's talk about what the the methodology behind. Because I see you counted the numbers and you started totaling everything up. Yeah. So uh, how, how did you decide on the number of entries to look at? Well, I, I didn't want to go too like super far in depth because first of all, I I don't like being on Facebook, so right. I wanted to kind of minimize my exposure time, but also get some usable data. So I was like, all right, I'll do twenty five. I'll do twenty five. Mm-hmm. So I just opened the app on my phone and just scroll through one at a time. I just I I scored it and put it in the appropriate column, and I got the twenty five of them, and I was like. I've got some good data here. I kind of feel like I could get some more. So I went ahead and went to 50. I doubled my original target number and I went to 50. And um, it was kind of an interesting result. I ended up like it was almost a dead split. Mm. I ended up with 24 positive, 26 negative, which is still pretty fucking bad because if you're going to do something for entertainment value, which I, it's kind of what social media is for, right? To, mm you for 20 minutes or an hour or whatever it is you want a a pause like an overwhelming positive experience or mm. you get rid of it right you don't do it anymore like if, if a game that you play is horrible half the time you're not gonna play that game anymore right uh, even though negative came out a little bit on top against positive uh, I still haven't deleted Facebook from my phone <laughs> and yeah. I would say the vast majority of people, still use Facebook, even though they know that it's a negative experience. And I'm, I'm not really sure why I'm just now getting into the, like the research side of this because it's becoming like a, like a psychological or no more of a sociological 
study for me. Mm. Like, why? Why do we have to be on social media? Is it because we feel like we're going to miss something? Is it actually addictive? I, I don't know. I, I would love to hear not only your thoughts, Amos, but I would love to hear our audience's thoughts, um, whether they want to tweet us at Ritual Misery or send us an email, uh, um, uh, podcast at ritualmisery.com. I love, love, love to get some feedback on so, this whole thing. The first thing that I see here, I counted them up and you had 11 ads and those were all included in your negative, which I, I don't, I'm not disparaging that. I'm just saying on a per post, an intentional post, as opposed to your advertisements, uh, mm-hmm. it still came out almost two to one for, for the positive. Um, I would, I would reckon to say that my feed is far more negative because I have, a much different group of people on my Facebook than you do. Cause I'm more, uh, conflict based in my social media. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, I think it'd be interesting to see how this trended over time. Like if you did your top 50 posts for like, like every Saturday or every, you know, once a week or something like that, uh, or once per day for like two weeks or something like that. Um, I would really like to see how that fleshed out. Just, just to see, you know, because you've got a sample here, you got 50, but it's not statistically relevant until you hit, you know, several sure. thousand or whatever. Um, sure. But I, th- I think that this is a good insight into, one, how you categorize your, your Facebook experience to begin with. Um, the, the categories that you assigned and how you define them, because you did, you actually defined them at the top of the page that I didn't show. Um, as far as... Uh, is is social media actually uh, addictive and what is it about social media that has this going back to it and all that kind of stuff? There are constantly studies coming out, which means there are constantly studies being made on that exact phenomenon, the, the social media phenomenon. And I have found that I typically use my Facebook feed to go on there and find funny stuff. It's just a, it's a, a, a crapshoot of stuff that I might find funny or to connect to podcasters. Those are the two primary reasons I use it. And then I usually use Facebook Messenger to communicate with family. Yes, Facebook Messenger is a different story altogether. Right, right. but I mean, they, they kind of have to go I, hand in hand. But I don't. I might, I might find some some interesting family stuff going on while I'm looking for something funny. But I'd never go to Facebook to look for family stuff. Yeah, but that's just that's, me, though. I mean, I, I'm every, every. I guess every user is different. And I know a lot of a lot of studies say that the reason that we do um, that we're addicted to social media is because we're trying to get that confirmation that those likes, you know, you have to get the likes and the reach shares and things like that. And to me, almost every time I post, hoping for for likes or or retweets, because it's never Facebook, um, and I'm hoping for the the likes and retweets, it's because I want to spread the news about ritual misery and what we're doing, not necessarily on my own stuff. My own stuff, I'm just putting out there, looking to maybe get some feedback, start a conversation, or at least share a little bit of what's on my mind. Mm-hmm. And, and that might be uh, maybe a generational thing too, because we kind of grew up a little bit different where we would just ride bicycles to each other's houses. And now it's more of electronic, uh, electronic friendships really. Yeah. Um, yeah. but either way, I mean, it's, it's, it's really interesting to see how, how Facebook handles and, and for anybody else, I'll, I'll, I'll share a link to this. If you don't mind, can share a link to this in the show notes. Um, mm-hmm. so they can look at your spreadsheet and see how, uh, how you broke it down and the definition that you used and see if anybody else wants to go through their Facebook feeds and do the same thing and, and uh, maybe tweet us those, those results at ritual misery. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's an interesting study and I'm glad that this is coming to the forefront, whether it's because of the current Facebook drama or not. I think this is something that really people need to be aware, not just of the data that we're all sharing, but also how much, uh, we rely on social media for for basic communication. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. And, and I'd be, I'd be curious to see a study in the future as well, like comparing social media platforms and how they differ in, uh, like psychological response, like oh, Twitter yeah. versus, versus Snapchat versus Instagram versus whatever. Right. Um, yeah. If anybody's got any comments on this, any, any insight at all, please podcast at ritual misery.com yeah. or hit us up on Twitter at ritual misery. Uh, yeah. Speaking of social media. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> um, and, yeah. and if you're, if you're interested in the, in what's going on with Facebook currently and why this is becoming such a big thing, me and Ken decided pre-show that we're not going to try to explain all that because it's just too crazy. 
Um, we will, however, point you to um, marketplaces make me smart where uh, Molly Wood and Kai Rizdal went over it in a lot of detail with some experts. And if episode 55 of that show, the, re- the most recent one to come out at the time of this recording, uh, episode 55, the surveillance economy, um, they really get into it and explain it. And it's, oh, it's, it's one that you're going to want to listen to more than once if you're on social media, because it's really, really interesting. Yeah, very thought provoking. And if, if you're not already listening to the show, Make Me Smart, uh, yeah, you need to add that to your podcatcher. Definitely. It is it's always fantastic. Um, and one more, I want one more adage. I have a very, very specific person blocked on Twitter because I don't like to see their 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 posts, their tweets, because it raises my blood pressure and and, and makes me boil. Um, and I, I I can't really say who this person is because of legal reasons. So that should probably tell you who it is. But I have found that just because I have them blocked on my account, I also have the Ritual Misery account. Sometimes I'll flip over to the Ritual Misery account on my phone, and that person's posts will uh, will still show up on there. And like, yeah, I don't, I can't reconcile this in my head because I know it's supposed to be two separate accounts, so two, two, and I can't block it all because some of those are really interesting for the point of the show. <laughs> Uh-huh. However, for my own sanity, I have to like steer as far away from that as possible. So it, it's like this weird dichotomy within the within the uh, the Twitter <laughs> app that I have I have have it blocked on this person blocked on one and not the other, and it's like, damn it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the whole thing is just man. We could do a whole podcast just about social media and its relevance and impact and and who you should block. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I could be the spoiler. Like at the end of the show, we reveal who we blocked this week. <laughs> I've actually only got like three people blocked and maybe five people muted. So. But I would love it if people did not block me on social media. <laughs> uh, if they if they want to follow me. On Twitter, it's at rm underscore del noche. Everywhere else, uh, either del noche or or del noche seventy seven. Uh, don't bother finding me on Facebook because I might not have that much longer. Uh, Amos, what about you, dude? Um, I'm at Ethan Kane, and uh, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Um, the, uh, the hot beverages asked if uh, or um, no, God King asked if there's a have a drink spot this week. No, there is not. Um, I we didn't get one, so. Um, Unfortunately, tune in next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might um, have, we might have, uh, we definitely might have, have a drink. De- 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 definitely might have, have a drink. Cont- what? I'm, I don't even know what you're saying anymore. Anyway, I'm at Ethan Kane on Twitter. That's where you can find me. That's where you can message me. Uh, get a hold of me, all that good stuff. At Ritual Misery is the show. And of course, you can uh, submit ideas on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can find all these links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com slash support. And we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.com slash ritualmisery. We'd like to give a special shout out to um, Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music. Um, And uh, also a special shout out to, uh, let's see if it's going to pop up on time, and Deuce Gone Wild and uh, some other people. Uh, Deuce Gone Wild is the only one that gives bits today, so we really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, this has been your Rich Misery Podcast. See ya. you have enjoyed this (laughs) program. All right, there we go. That's the show.